Drones of different varieties have been used during Russia's invasion of Ukraine. A $500 product is able to drop little bombs into car windows. And that's something where you just haven't really seen with other technology. The world's biggest drone provider, DJI, is one of many companies that has found their products used on the battlefield. The unfortunate thing is it's a very reliable product. So it, like, it's, it, it's become a, a product of choice, even for those who want to use a drone inappropriately. Do you know that this drone is used in uh, military circumstances? Yeah, uh, because it's actually very rugged mm -hmm. and very precise. Mm. How fast can it go? Uh, on paper, it's 72 km per hour. What is it about DJI drones that make people go crazy? It's very easy to use. I don't have to worry about having to know the manual. The global drone market is expected to grow from $30.6 billion in 2022 to $55.8 billion by 2030. And more than 70% of that is dominated by the Shenzhen-based company. DJI's meteoric rise is an impressive feat for a Chinese brand, one of the few that have succeeded on the global stage through its ingenuity. DJI's story began like many other successful tech startups, in a college dorm room, where an ambitious young student named Frank Wang developed early prototypes of what would become the foundation of a multi-billion dollar privately held empire. The model plane enthusiast had a simple goal at a time, to create a flying toy that would be sturdier than the flimsy version in the market then. Today, DJI, which stands for Daxiang Innovations, has been dubbed the apple of the drone industry, its product lineup includes robots and camera accessories such as gimbals and stabilizers. Its first commercially successful product was the Phantom Drone, which Wang claimed in a media interview made DJI the first company to bring military-grade technology to the public. Frank had an edict that if you get the product right, everything else will fall into place. Even today, where we have 14,000 or more employees, 25% of our employees are research and development focused. And so we're now the only manufacturer that really manufactures everything from say a 250 gram drone that you would use to fly for say family vacations and to get fun videos, all the way up to an agricultural drone that would spread seed or pesticide across farmland. We sort of have a suite of various drones that are good for search and rescue, public safety, fire, construction, mapping, everything. But consumer drones are just a small subset of the wider drone market, eclipsed by drones used for commercial and defence purposes. At the start of Russia's invasion of Ukraine in 2022, a Ukrainian minister called out DJI for being complicit in the war through its use by the Russian military. This compelled DJI to formally deny that its products are designed for military use. We don't adapt our products or weaponize them for combat use, and we certainly don't support their use for combat. We've even gone to the step of actually stopping sales to both Russia and the Ukraine during the current conflict. Most of the reports that I've seen in the media reference people buying products in third countries where you can literally buy to any electronics retailer. It's very hard for us to stop that. We don't actually know who the end users of our products are in the, for the most part. You know, we don't have any way of tracking that. And th that would be just as true of any other consumer electronics company though. I mean, uh, everything from sort of Samsung to iPhone or whatever else. The recent controversy around DJI products being used for warfare isn't the only challenge the company has had to face. In December of 2021, the drone maker was placed on an investment blacklist by the US government, which banned American investors from buying or selling shares in the company. The US Treasury Department specifically singled out DJI for providing drones to the Xinjiang Public Security Bureau which American authorities allege are being used for the surveillance of Uyghur Muslims in the region. But the move is largely symbolic, as it's a private company, meaning its ownership structure and fullest of investors are not publicly available. You know, a lot of the concerns have always stemmed from the relationship between the, the Chinese government uh, and Chinese corporations. Um, and that's raised a lot of concerns with U.S. regulators, but also in Europe. David is the head of research at Drone Analyst, providing insights into the commercial drone industry. He was also a founding member of DJI's enterprise business, leaving the company in 2020. With any technology, there's going to be great applications and life-saving applications. 
And there's things that we need to manage and avoid. And kind of the big question that, that all of us should have is, you know, what is each company doing as a role to police their own products? and please throw in efforts. We've said unequivocally that we have had nothing to do with treatment of Uyghurs in Xinjiang. In fact, we have quite stringent language in all of our distributor agreements that states that they have to abide by US sanctions. The truth is that we've gone through numerous audits of our firmware and of our products, but we've also cooperated with the US Department of Interior with their audit, with Idaho National Lab doing an audit for Department of Homeland Security. And in no case have they found that data is going anywhere it shouldn't. However, the US Department of Defense named DJI a Chinese military company in 2022, leading the drone maker to step up lobbying efforts in Washington against a national security ban on its products. If you want to share videos with us, you have to opt in to share that data. The same for flight logs. We've even created a, a local data mode that means when you're flying one of our products, you don't even need to connect to the internet. You couldn't even transfer data through a mishap or a mistake. You're literally hermetically sealed off from, from the internet. Paolo Stagno is a cybersecurity expert who back in 2018 uncovered vulnerabilities affecting the Phantom 3, one of DJI's leading drones at the time. Basically, I uh, performed security audit uh, on all its components when I was able to send spoofed GPS signals to the drone in order to pretty much control all its movement uh, in midair, as well as bypass the no-fly zone that at the time uh, DJI set on specific location. That's pretty much systemic to all the consumer drones because they do not have any mitigation for that. However, DJI's popularity makes it particularly susceptible to exploitation, Paolo said. There is like a black market of uh, modified drone firmware. Most of the pilots that want to, let's say, unlock the drones, try to download such firmware in order to uh, remove limitation about height and uh, distance from the drone operator. In November 2022, DJI's core crypto engine, which is fitted on most of its drones, received a pass from the U.S. Department of Commerce for meeting critical data security requirements. If they've broken any existing laws in their country, then it's really a matter for the police to take on. It's not something that we can, we can actively engage on. But the security concerns surrounding the use of DJI drones don't stop there. In 2019, DJI released a drone detection platform called Aeroscope in response to potential safety and security challenges in high-risk areas such as airports, prisons and government facilities. The Aeroscope basically is a ground station that you can use to track and find drones and drones operators. For example, there are reports of um, Russian army using that specific technology to track and find drones, Ukraine drones operators. If any of our distributors participate in anything that's, that's seen as modifying for military use, would be grounds for losing their distributorship. I mean, we, are, we take policing that quite seriously. Even though it doesn't command a monopoly, with brands such as Autel and Skydio striving to make inroads in the market, demand for DJI products remains brisk, says Charles, an employee at a photography equipment rental company. Whenever we talk about uh, stabilizers and gimbal, people just turn to DJI and seldom we hear people talk about like, hey, I want to inquire on you know, that particular other brand. But uh, you do carry other brands here, right? We do, yeah. And how often does that get rented out? Once a year. <laughs> Once a year. Were you aware that DJI has been in the news uh, the past couple of years due to privacy issues, security issues, and even militarization of their products? We weren't really aware of that. Yeah, but with all this, I think we still didn't face any drop in rentals. What's next for DJI in the next couple of years? Drones currently have to be flown within visual line of sight with one person operating the sticks, right? Like flying. You know, we now have a product that would enable beyond visual line of sight and semi-autonomous operations. And that's something that regulations have not caught up with yet. And the drone maker has its eyes on the automotive industry too. In 2016, it launched an automotive project that is now a full-fledged subsidiary focused on autonomous driving. From my experience at DJI, who was just kind of scratching the surface, is certainly a company that, despite the headwinds, has a lot going for it.